we've now grown to almost 25 therapists in three locations. Since beginning at Wild Tree Wellness six years ago, therapist Liz Kittleson has witnessed the need for mental health services sharply increase in recent years. A lot of kids and teens right now are experiencing, I would say, a really big rise in anxiety and depression. Anxiety due to just so much uncertainty. Nowhere is the demand felt more strongly than in the young. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the percentage of teens reporting feelings of sadness or hopelessness jumped from 26 to 37 percent between 2009 and 2019 increasing to 44% in 2021. School used to be a safe haven. It used to be a place that felt like there was structure and we understood what was gonna happen. But the last couple years has shown that like, we don't really always know. Kittleson says at the onset of the pandemic, there was a drop off in services initially as people worked through the unknown, but that changed as the pandemic continued isolation taking its toll. When you don't leave the house for a while, you're not seeing your friends and family, that can really take its toll. So that's where we started to really see an increase was when people were isolated and, and feeling worried. Young folks aren't the only ones seeing an increase in anxiety and depression. According to the American Psychological Association, rates of anxiety among U.S. adults were about four times higher between April 2020 and August 2021 than they were in 2019. Wild Tree is having difficulty keeping up with the demand, but the increase may also be the result of mental health becoming less of a social stigma. I would say primary care doctors, teachers, administrators, even like uh, bosses at jobs are now making uh, referrals to mental health like the first line. So when they see something come in, they don't just ignore it anymore. They really encourage people to access those resources. As children and parents enter a new school year, Kittleson suggests allowing time and space for the transition and suggests parents be flexible with their kids. But if once the routine sets in and things still feel off, she says it's a good time to reach out for help as parents are the first line of defense. As parents, it's really being mindful and watching their children, um, checking out if there's any changes in behavior. Are they maybe refusing things, like refusing to go to school or dropping out of sports that they used to like? Um, are they sitting at home just on their phone and not really going out as much? They, um, that's a really good place to look first, is those first warning signs before anything gets worse.